we've been true to our commitment, uh, Jamaica's public health system is moving increasingly towards higher service delivery, and in this regard, it is indeed possible to reimagine the end of AIDS as a public health threat. The government definitely has been prioritizing HIV AIDS healthcare through a number of programs, policies, and partnerships. State Minister of Health and Wellness Juliet Cuthbert Flynn speaks more on these later in the show. Plus, how the partnership with Health Connect Jamaica has been providing access to quality healthcare for persons living with HIV AIDS. We also look at the Proceeds of Crime Act with the Financial Investigation Division. You're watching Jamaica Magazine, and I am Theodore Henry. Welcome. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, December 1, 2022. Starting today, there will be an improvement in garbage collection island-wide. This comes as 50 new trucks and 10 motorcycles have been added to the fleet of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA. They were handed over during a ceremony at the National Heroes Park yesterday. The new units, valued at approximately $6.9 million, were manufactured in China and purchased from Tankweld Limited, the local dealers for the Shackman brand of garbage trucks in Jamaica. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says they are now being distributed across the island to improve garbage collection. But he says the mission to keep Jamaica clean also needs the cooperation of citizens. At the most basic level, we will ask you, do not throw your waste through the window. Do not throw it in the gully. We are asking you to reduce your waste footprint. Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie says that in addition to adding more trucks, the government is looking into technological ways to enhance garbage collection. In the new financial year, going to introduce technology in sweep cleaning. We're going to be bringing at least 10 of these sweep cleaning machines into the system to be a part of the new revolutionary approach to garbage collection and street sweeping in the country. Of the 50 trucks, 12 will go to the west and 10 each are being assigned to the metropolitan and southern parks and markets. The remaining eight will form part of a roving team dubbed Strategically Working to Enforce and Enhance Public Cleansing Operations and Programs Sweep Cop. The 10 motorcycles will be used by the NSWMA's enforcement team to track down illegal dumping sites. The mobility of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, has been strengthened by the acquisition and distribution of 25 new pickup vehicles valued at $176 million. The handover took place at the police commissioner's headquarters in Kingston on Tuesday. Minister of National Security Dr. Harris Chang says the resources will greatly enhance the JCF's frontline operations in areas such as faster response to incidents and patrolling of the streets. He says this is part of the overall commitment to equipping the police with the tools they need to carry out their duties in a safe and effective manner. The minister says the JCF is being modernized through a structured, long-term strategic plan and investment. Vehicles provide better mobility reliability and response, quick response time. And this in addition to what was handled over earlier in the year, it also, we are extending that kind of activity to the various specifically to the police. During the last two years, I think some 134 police stations and facilities have had significant improvement on them. Two additional unions have now signed agreements with the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service for the new restructured compensation system for government workers. On Wednesday, November 30, the Jamaica Association of Public Health Inspectors and the Staff Association of the College of Agriculture, Science and Education signed with the ministry. They bring to 17 the number of trade unions that have so far reached agreements with the government. Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark says government is committed to implementing a public sector compensation that is fair, transparent and sustainable. He asserts that every public sector worker will be better off financially when the new system is implemented. 
The new compensation system will be implemented over three years with an effective date of April 1, 2022, and will cost approximately $120 billion over the period. Persons are being urged to be careful in the use of antimicrobials, such as antibiotics, to prevent the development of drug-resistant pathogens. This is known as antimicrobial resistance, AMR, classified by the World Health Organization, WHO, as a global health and development threat. AMR occurs when bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites change over time and no longer respond to medicines. This then makes infections harder to treat, increasing the risk of disease spread, severe illness, and death. Director of Veterinary Public Health in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Lynette Peters, says persons should practice good hygiene and apply other preventative measures to reduce the need for antimicrobial agents. If you're talking at the farm level, good infection prevention and control measures. Similarly, in human health, at the hospitals, proper cleaning up so these germs would not be around to cause infection. Proper food handling proper um, practices, very important. Washing your hands, using um, clean water, water that is safe, and also if there's a disease that there is a vaccine that can prevent, it's better to get vaccinated. Dr. Peters was addressing a recent JIS think tank. And finally, the Jamaica Anti-Doping Commission, JADCO, is encouraging Jamaican athletes to make use of the e-learning platform offered by the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA. The program is called the Anti-Doping E-Learning Platform, or ADL for short. It is designed to offer educational solutions for athletes, coaches, medical professionals, anti-doping organization practitioners, researchers, and other members of the clean sport community. Executive Director of JADCO, June Spence Jarrett, says athletes should use the technology to educate themselves on all things doping. Athletes and support personnel have you have 24 hours to access anti-doping information regardless of your location, wherever you are you can access anti-doping information. And another benefit is that athletes and support personnel can complete e-learning program based on your own schedule. Ms. Jarrett was speaking at the 9th Annual Senior Athletes Anti-Doping Education Workshop recently. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Just recently, the security forces seized millions of dollars in assets and cash from a major player in the criminal network. What's the process for these proceeds that are generated from crime? The Financial Investigation Division breaks it down for us. Do you know someone who scams or was scammed out of their wealth? As at August 2022, just under a billion dollars in assets that are suspected to be criminal property have been restrained and managed by the Financial Investigations Division, FID. The FID plays an important role in preventing and investigating money laundering, fraud, lottery scamming and other financial crimes within Jamaica. Under the Proceeds of Crime Act, POCA, the FID's investigative and asset recovery powers have increased and they have established compliance responsibilities for financial institutions. Hi, I am Shaquille Rochester Shorter and welcome to Finance Matters. Today we have Mr. Courtney Smith, Director of Legal Services at FID. Remember to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow the Ministry of Finance on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn to see all the episodes and highlights. Thanks for coming on our show today. 
What is the FID's mandate? The FID's mandate is to remove simply the proceeds from criminal activity. Our mandate involves maintaining statistics, advising the government minister, um, portfolio minister with respect to financial crime matters, as well as to actively pursue the proceeds of crime, manage them and remove them from um, criminal hands. How important was it for the government to have implemented POCA? It was very important. Jamaica doesn't reside in a vacuum. We're an island, we're not on our own. We're part of an international community with international rules of law that we must follow. It's a part of international requirements. Our partners right across the globe are moving in this direction and Jamaica being a signatory to certain treaties was mandated to pass laws like the Proceeds of Crime Act. So being at FID, tell me a big win for FID. A big win is seeing um, proceeds of criminal activity flowing from um, a parish council, uh, upwards of 250 million. Was, Interesting. Yes. We, we, we participated in the investigation, prosecution and recovery process in that regard and we are looking towards recovering up to about $250 million of government funds that were misappropriated. Wow. Interesting that you mentioned that, Mr. Smith, but tell me more about how FID is tackling a lottery scamming. Well, it's a multifaceted approach. FID doesn't tackle any financial crime especially one as important and as international and far-reaching as lottery scamming on our own. We have partners locally and abroad, the JCF, MOCA, DEA in the US, the US yes. Postal Services. We, we link with them on a regular basis to investigate and prosecute um, lottery scamming activities. So we understand that it's a collaborative effort on yes. the part of FID. You mentioned the DEA in the United States yes. What are some tips that you can give to people um, to, to protect themselves from lottery scamming? The first thing is, if you didn't buy a ticket, you don't stand a chance. So if somebody calls you to ask you to send money to them for, for some prize that you allegedly won that you didn't pay for, just hang up the phone. That's the first thing. If you have received such a call, you feel free to contact any law enforcement agency because you never know if that call will lead us. The second thing is that you must be aware, educate yourself about what the laws are. Um, if it sounds fishy, it probably is fishy and just by participating in it, just know that you also can end up being charged for money laundering related offenses. So just be aware of your own liabilities and act accordingly. If it sounds like a, a scam, just by participating in it, you may expose yourself. How can persons report financial crimes? Financial crimes reporting has become a lot easier. In addition to the usual crime stop and 311 and so on, you can contact the FID directly, 928-5141, or you can visit our website and contact us there. Um, www.fid.gov.jm um, You can also send us messages through our, our social media contacts FID Jamaica Where can Jamaicans find more information about financial crimes just to be aware and knowledgeable? Mm -hmm. Well, the website I mentioned earlier as, as well as our social media handles um, as well as the, you can watch our short film Easy Go on YouTube, you'll learn something there and there's a, a vibrant comment section that you can discuss issues Yeah, we really. can participate right. in it. Well, thank you, Mr. Smith, for coming on our program today and telling us about FID's mandate and its role in protecting one's asset. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on this episode of Finance Matters. Remember to follow us on social media at MOF Jamaica and tune in next week as we continue to demystify the economic and fiscal policies and initiatives implemented by the government to empower Jamaicans as we chart a path to Jamaica's economic prosperity.
Jamaicans consume on average 9 to 12 grams of sodium or salt per day, twice the World Health Organization recommended amount of less than 5 grams or 1 teaspoon of salt, and more ideally, less than 2 grams of sodium per adult per day from all food sources. This excess salt in the diet causes high blood pressure, kidney and bone damage, gastric cancer, obesity, and worsening of asthma. Reduce the amount of salt you consume to no more than 3 to 5 grams or half to 1 teaspoon per day for adults and less than 2 grams for children under 11 years of age. Let's shake the salt habit and live healthy. A public service message from the Jamaica Information Service. As we observe World AIDS Day, let us look at the level of service being provided through Health Connect Jamaica and its partnership with the Ministry of Health. I recently had a conversation with them. Let's recap. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has strengthened its delivery of HIV treatment, care and prevention through a partnership with private healthcare provider Health Connect Jamaica, which we can abbreviate as HCJ. To speak more on the services being offered through this well-needed partnership is Director of Health Connect Jamaica, Dr. Jeffrey Barrow. Welcome to the program, Dr. Barrow. Thank you for having me. Welcome. All right. So... Let's talk about HCJ. Tell us about your company. How did it come to be? Sure. So Health Connect Jamaica is actually an initiative out of the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the University of the West Indies. Right. Uh, we are funded by USAID to develop um, an intervention to address the barriers and gaps that the national HIV response was facing. Mm. Namely, those gaps are around the quantity of services that were being delivered for people living with HIV, right. the quality of those services, and we were tasked to do it rapidly and in a cost-effective manner. So four things we, were, we needed to address in quite a short space of time. All right, so tell us about some of the services. How, how do you go about hitting these four things? Sure, so um, what we've done is develop this network of partners and providers um, in the private sector. Mm -hmm. So we contract with doctors that already exist. So one of our clinicians that provide services might be your private doctor. Right. Um, the labs, the pharmacies, and the psychologists are already existing in the private sector. And what we've done is co-op them into our network of, of, of uh, service providers to be able to to, to leverage the existing structures, reduce the overhead costs, and to do it in a cost-effective manner. So how do people get access to it? So we act, um, Health Connect Jamaica is the hub of this hub-and-spoke model of network. Mm -hmm. um, so what will happen is that we will get referrals from many places. So through somebody who might watch this show, they will contact the hub, and then we will distribute them from the hub throughout the, the network. Right. So we have case managers and contact investigators that work in-house mm -hmm. um, and what they do is they help the clients to navigate the system within the private sector to be able to access the labs, the pharmacies and the doctor. I'm pretty sure this does wonders for the centralizing of data. Um, yeah, so we actually um, utilize one of the Ministry of Health's uh, electronic databases and that's how we are able to seamlessly feed all of our data directly into the national system supporting their ability to make decisions, to see what's happening in the field. I'd like to know how HCJ and the Ministry of Health and Wellness got together. So I've been involved in HIV care since 2007. Right. Um, I've worked from the university hospital to the private sector being a doctor. I actually acted as the director for treatment and care in the HIV program at the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I had a clear understanding of where the gap was and what needed to happen in order to reach to epidemic control. Right. Um, and so. Uh, we engaged with the U.S. government um, along with the Permanent Secretary and the Ministry of Health, uh, Mr. Dunson Bryan, um, to really make a decision of how we're going to do this multi-sectoral response to HIV and how could we leverage the private sector um, to be able to respond to the needs and the challenges that the national program was having. I'm very curious about the different disciplines because people think about HIV care, they simply think doctors and pills. Sure. But there's more involved, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. So HIV is really a social disease now, right? Um, chronic disease, but it's really a social disease. Um, so what we need to be able to understand is that if you cannot support people who are uh, have very significant social needs, to address those needs, the healthcare is always last on the list. Mm. Um, 
one of the challenges with HIV is that you can remain well or healthy looking yes. for about 10 to 15 years after your diagnosis. Mm. And so for 15 years, you're infectious mm. and you can be transmitting the virus to other people until right. you remain ill and go to the doctor. So if we don't have programs that intervene and screen and diagnose people early, even when they're not feeling unwell, mm -hmm. then we're missing the boat. Ah, right? So there's that okay. component. And then when we do diagnose them, if we're not able to support them for all of those other social needs, the housing, the childcare, the food, the education, uh, then we're not going to be able to have them on the medication consistently, which you need to be right. in order to suppress your virus and to be untransmittable. The psychological as well? 100%. So that's why we not only have doctors in the private network, but we also have psychologists that work with us. Mm. Um, and so they provide most of their services actually over the virtual platform. And that's how we have n national coverage of mental health services through the network, through, through six or seven psychologists. So uh, seriously, a full service network. Yeah, so, so we understand that we have to be, but we, we recognize right away that we don't have to be the ones to provide all of them, right? So we leverage the existing structures that are already there. So for right. example, we work with uh, the Ministry of Label and Social Security around social access programs. So we're working really hard now to build out that component of social protection agencies. Right. So when you ramp up the quality of a service and you reduce the viral loads that's being in an individual or all of your individuals, then you control the epidemic because not as many new people are becoming infected. You can get more information about the Ministry of Health and the Health Connect partnership benefiting persons living with HIV and soon many other ailments by visiting healthconnectja.com. This has been Get the Facts. Our guest has been Director of Health Connect Jamaica, Dr. Jeffrey Barrow. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Theodore Henry. Take good care. An achievement made in the care of persons living with HIV AIDS is bringing the viral suppression rate to 50% in 2018 and further to 75% in 2022. Mother to child transmission has also declined significantly from 5.4% in 2017 to less than 1% in 2022. Let's hear more from the Minister of State in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Much progress, uh, we can say, has been made to end the status of this viral disease as a prevailing public health threat. But here in Jamaica, those efforts have included delivery of care, which includes uh, not just medical, but social, psychological, peer support to enable people living with um, HIV and AIDS uh, to live their best lives. Uh, we have updating guideline documents and facilitating programmatic reviews, reducing the barrier to accessing care for our key and vulnerable population. And so we've been true to our commitment. Uh, Jamaica's public health system is moving increasingly towards higher service delivery. And in this regard, it is indeed possible to reimagine the end of AIDS as a public health threat. But to see this goal's fulfillment, we must prioritize HIV prevention, care, treatment, and also to reinforce uh, the partner support. It is then that we will find our national HIV response repositioned to success. In 2020, we became one of the first countries globally to endorse and to participate in global partnership for action to eliminate all forms of HIV-related stigma and discrimination. We're very proud of that. The use of data continues to drive interventions at not just the parish level, but also the regional and the national levels. Data quality has seen noteworthy upgrading at all treatment sites and the result in an overall progression on the cascade and so the fruit of our efforts involve enabling dialogue around issues that cause some of our vulnerable people and groups to experience shame. In this regard, we remain sensitive to the need for broader efforts to combat all forms of discrimination 
in order that those who are affected by and living with HIV have access to healthcare services. The Ministry of Health and Wellness, we will remain committed to delivering high quality and people-centered services for people living with HIV, and we will continue to ensure continued partnership across the sectors for the maximum impact. So I am one half of a sister team. This is my sister Michelle. We are, Lord, we're lots of things. We're restauranters. We have been caterers. We've been in the food business for the past 20 something years. Our father was also a hotelier and in the restaurant business. So we, we grew up in the, a functioning operating restaurant just because we were around that environment a lot. And we perceive ourselves not as chefs, but as sort of translators and storytellers of the lifestyle. I think food is a source of unity and connectivity because I think everyone can kind of go oh over something delicious. Whether you're from Japan, Italy or Jamaica, you can find commonality in the experience of something delicious. I think the magic of Jamaica is, is really sort of intertwined with the cuisine and the personality of the people and the music and the, the sort of the vibrant energy that you get and yet that's completely and perfectly married in the cuisine because the cuisine is a melange of traditional foods inherited from slavery and colonial days. It's fun, it's vibrant, it's energetic and it really marries very well with the lifestyle that we have here. I think food is celebration, it's coming together, it's sharing and I think very much in the Caribbean it is very typical for families to gather, friends to gather to celebrate over a meal. Caribbean culture and Jamaican culture is a culture of community and of celebration of life even in hardship and even in hard times. And so I think all of those things just offer another kind of perspective. It's a unique way of living and a unique way of being. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Join us again tomorrow when we bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the production crew, I'm Theodore Henry. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.